To help us look at the discipline of yesteryear, we sent Alan back to his old school. I must warn you that uh, this film contains teachers some viewers may find disturbing. This is St Jude's High School, a secondary specialising in the performing arts and media studies. But back in the 1970s, it was an actual school and I was a pupil here. Today, the corridors of St Jude's are alive with the sound of laughter and play. Back then, however, the school echoed with an altogether different noise. the noise of corporal punishment. Thrashings were the order of the day back then. The only way is to avoid a walloping, keep out of trouble, or get homeschooled like Dominic Bentham. Although I think he ended up killing himself in his 40s. Alas, for those of us schooled in the classroom, the finger of blame didn't always land on the guilty. Partridge, what is that? Bring it here. Stop gawping for crying out loud. Ordinarily, I'd see a boy taking the long walk to the teacher's desk and think, he was being disruptive. Go on, sir, batter him. But on this occasion, that boy was me. What is it? It's a picture of you, sir, with a penis where your nose should be. Is that what you think I look like? It wasn't me, sir. It was Smithy. He's from a broken home. <laughs> Something changed in me that day. I had walked to school a boy. Now sit down, you lemon. But I returned home. A big boy. Fortunately, what the psychotic teachers of the 1970s <laughs> lacked in self-control, they also lacked in technique. Inexperienced teachers would often opt for a one-handed stroke with little backlift and a short follow-through. But swing analysis from my squash coach reveals this to be both ineffective and inaccurate. With little rotation of the hips, the backswing ends here, which means the maximum arc of the swing is shortened, and an unsteady stance means energy dissipates as the swing is completed. But watch what happens with a firmer base and a longer backlift. In this case, the swing stops here. Look at the line from the shoulder all the way down to the knee. The wider stance creates stability so that energy can be transferred from the standing leg all the way to the front knee. And with the hips rotated right round, the striker is like a coiled spring. If we play on, watch now how all of that force is driven down through the arc of the swing, picking up speed, picking up speed, as the front knee bears all the weight and then POW! The striker hits through the target, continuing to rotate the hips until he ends up in a finishing pose that is the mirror image of the back lift. Impressive. Eventually, corporal punishment was subject to a blanket ban, except in emergencies. But the memories remain. Sore heads, swollen knuckles, rosy red bum cheeks. Sounds funny. Don't feel funny. Oh, so I was slightly hyperventilating then. <laughs> Used to lead to the uh, lead, lead to panic attacks. <sighs> Jesus, not now. Whew. What were you getting? Uh, a panic attack. Oh no, uh, the, uh, the bouquet. Uh, well, I'm. I, I'm not. It's been a while since I've used you know, wine words. Oh well, people use. All sorts of words to describe wine. I mean, yeah. you know, vanilla, melon, straw. <laughs> Surely only livestock know what straw tastes like. It's just a hint. Yeah, it's just a hint. Just a, yeah. And with why, red why, wines. Yeah, wines, wines have hints. Yeah. Uh, have a go, Alan. What did you, what did you get um, on that? Um, pe pepper? Yes! Pepper? Really? Yes! Really? It is I, 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 it is pe yeah, pe yeah, I mean, yeah. No, that yes, that is a very mm, that's a very peppery wine. Lots of pepper, lots of pepper. Yeah, I, I didn't even have to think of it. As soon as I brought it to my nose, bang, pepper. Um, yeah, so yeah, no, amazing. Well, you've got a good nose. Oh, mm. like you. <clears throat> What's next? Mmm, mm. that's a very mmm. Oh, that's oh, now that's very familiar. Yes, now that's oh, what is it? It's, um, oh, oh, um. Currants. No, 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 no. It's. Uh, 
very specific. Mm. Well, it, <clears throat> it's musky, so... No, no, it's... no, 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 it's, it's, it's... Berries? No, the no. rosy, that's wrong. Sorry. Um, cherry... Cinnamon? No, no! This wine tastes of chew it. Oh! <laughs> Oh, well, I've never um, heard we, of Have we got any chew, it? Got chew it? <laughs> now, this, this Chardonnay from Devon is exceptionally well balanced. Rosie, it's great. They're all great. Fantastic. Nicely fruity with a long finish. Yeah, it's... it's it, it's. What does that mean? Well, it, it long means... Long finish. It means the, the taste lingers on the palate. It does. It does. That's It, it lingers mm. on the palate. Absolutely. Like, like, like a lazy forklift truck driver. He would linger on the palate. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> <coughs> Keep talking. Well, um, so, so it lingers on the palate, mm -hmm. and um, the taste, therefore, will... will, will... Oh, Sorry, are you all right? Yeah, that's just this thing oh. here. There you go. <laughs> just... No problem. Just... Go on, so what are you saying? So is that taste lingering for you? <sighs> yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can still taste it. Definitely, yeah. yeah, still that. Well, you will. You will for some time. Yeah, it's, um, it's got a... It's still there. Yeah. I mean, we can't wait till the flavour goes before we carry on the conversation. Because um, it's 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 because it's a long finish. It will be there for some time. Um, no, it's gone. Cheers. So, um, cheers. <laughs> anyway, um, which of the wines did you like best, Alan? I'm curious to know. Which is the most... Well, how? What are the prices individually? Um, bottle, bottle to bottle, bottle to bottle. Right. Well, this one here, this comes. This is six pounds. Uh -huh. um, well, this is eight ninety-five, and this one, um, this one's quite pricey. It comes in at twelve pounds. That one is the one I think had the best flavour. So, drama therapy. It's therapy that uses role play to help people work through difficult or challenging situations. Well, like therapy, good drama encourages us to look inside. Mm. It helps us to understand our own behaviour and deal with emotional issues. In fact, Simon was telling me earlier that Aristotle coined the term catharsis to describe the healing we experience through drama. Hubris, nemesis, catharsis. Well, it's all Greek to me. Thought I'd do the joke this time, seeing as uh, Simon was being a bit serious. But what kind of problems does drama therapy help to confront? It's very versatile. Marital strife, uh, workplace disagreements, psychological trauma. Drama therapy is not always easy. It can be very challenging and sometimes tearful. Mm. But it should always feel welcoming. I think you just described the pub quiz I go to. <laughs> you see, you should be saying this. <laughs> Uh, now, I believe that we're going to see some drama therapy in action. That's right, Jenny. Um, over here we have two actors, mm -hmm. Daniel and Louise. And in a typical therapy situation, they would play out scenarios that couples can try themselves. Right. Um, now, in this scenario, Louise thinks that Daniel is emotionally closed off. But Daniel feels that as he's getting older, he does need more space. Guys? And you wonder why we never resolve anything. It's because we argue, and then five minutes later, you get upset and I have to back down. No one's saying you have to. But that's what happens when you play that card. It's not a card, Daniel. It's how I feel. Just because you're a closed book doesn't mean I have to be. <laughs> what am I supposed to say to that? You should tell her that... Sorry, that's... No, 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 that's fine. Do you want to jump in? Oh, me? God, no. <laughs> yeah, no, please do. Step in for Daniel. No, I, it's just... It, it, I've not acted for quite a while. Oh, I'm sorry. I hadn't realised you'd acted. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, just with North Norfolk players, a bit of acting, producing, directing. Most recently, uh, A Few Good Men. Oh, so, amazing. What part did yeah. you play? The Jack Nicholson role, so, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, a bit, a, bit, a bit of a tough act to follow, but uh, I just tried to do it so, sort of, you know, like, like... The truth! You can't handle the truth! Yeah. So I, so I sort of went higher and then I did the scoff at the end, which I don't think Nicholson thought of, so... Well, how would you feel about having a go at this scene? Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, great. OK, um, Daniel, you step out. Louise, you're in the kitchen, you're making dinner. And Alan, just start a conversation uh, when you're ready. OK. Um, um. Don't overthink it. OK, yep, right. Mmm. 
Smells good. It's just spag bowl. I didn't mean the dinner. Well, you never normally come in till it's cold. I'm sorry to go on. I just don't want you to feel like I'm complaining because I want to spend time with you. Hey, baby girl. Just been out of my bike. My motorcycle's important to me. You know that. But you know the best part of the journey? <laughs> Riding that steel horse back home to you. Try it without the accent. Me or her? You. OK, but the general direction... Don't forget all that. Both of you sit at the table. OK. Now, let's just pretend that she's your actual wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I wish I could spend more time with you. See, I hear you saying that, but I don't feel it. Then we'll figure something out, but you're going to have to stop going on at me. I'm sorry if I've got a gift that people enjoy and I find very satisfying. I'm sorry that you don't have that because for some reason God didn't give you any talent. Shall we stop there? Yeah, that felt good. Today we're talking condiments. You're stuck on a desert island, you're allowed one condiment, which is it to be? John in Sproston. Ketchup. Harry in Bodham. Mustard. Kev in Norwich. Gravy. That's not a condiment, it's a hot sauce. A pistol then. That's a brand of gravy. Bronson pickle then. And that's a relish. It's eight minutes to 12 in less than one hour. Mustard. Myself and sidekick Simon. Man the barricades. Will come face to face with one of the most beautiful women in the world. Anthea Turner. Anthea the Body Turner. Ooh. You like her, do you then, Alan? What man doesn't? Seriously, what man doesn't? Oh, no, hardly any. Exactly. She... Stevie Wonder. St <laughs> or, or Ray Charles. Any blind man. <laughs> yeah. She is the Ford Escort Cabriolet of middle-aged women. Sleek, petite, a little bit racy. 0% finance available. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. But it's still funny, still surreally funny. That, which is why we booked you. Why we booked you. Power steering. Um, by the way, uh, please don't text in. The woman slash car thing is uh, exclusively for myself and sidekick Simon. Uh, we're not. Uh, we're just doing that. Uh, what's that word you used? Uh, the other riffing. Day? We're riffing. We're jamming. Yeah. Well, uh, well, riffing. Yeah. I, I, I can say it's always like this, isn't it? it is, always, we had yes. we had uh, brunch. Um, well, in, I I had lunch on Sunday. You, no, yeah, 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 yeah. You had lunch yeah. uh, because you because I ever turned up at about half past eleven. Yeah, and then I pitched up about ten past he twelve. Up half past twelve, like blooming <laughs> Lord, rolls in like Lord Vader, Lucan, and um, uh, what did you order? The uh, well, I had the Thai fish cakes. Yeah, that's and right. You sat there stuffing Don't tell me what I had. Uh, I had the. I had, uh, I had, I can't remember. You're listening to North Norfolk Digital with Alan Partridge. Oh, it's gone. You all right, Alan? Yeah. Yep. Thought I'd lost you there. <laughs> Away with the fairies. Uh, there's only one fairy in here. Yeah, I'm looking right at him. Hey, you cheeky <laughs> tit! <laughs> this is great banter. <laughs> it really is. So anyway, there we were having lunch, brunch, brunch. call it. What do, you, what, do you, what do you call lunch and brunch uh, when, they're, when, they're, when they're combined? What's the... Uh, blunch? <laughs> is it a blunch? <laughs> That's excellent. Really good. And um, I'd got the supplements, and I? But we spread the supplements yeah. out on the, on the coffee table. And uh, I think we had a bit of a tussle over the motoring section. Ooh, we did a bit. We locked horns. We grappled. We, d we, and, did, uh, we wrestled for well, them. Well, we didn't wrestle. But um, and, uh, uh, you gave me a bag of crisps, didn't you? Yes. Cheesy, cheesy onion. Cheese and onion. Cheese and onion. Um, and I now normally when I open a packet of crisps, I open them at the top. But Simon showed me a technique whereby you splice the packet down the side lay it flat and share the contents. Hippie style. Hippie style. Um, and I think, in all seriousness, it was at that point that I realised that uh, here was a guy who's prepared to push the envelope. Cheers. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, so you open an envelope, probably do it in a very unconventional way. Mm. OK, I've come up with a, a list, a top ten list of things not to say to a customs officer. Time for travel update with Chris Gifford. Uh, Kippers. That's what I had. 
As the Dalai Lama says, the show must go on. Ah, uh, yeah, you cock a snook at bad news, don't you? I, I do, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm a snook cocker. I'm sure there's an anagram in there somewhere. What? Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Just, I'm just saying, I'm sure there's an anagram in there somewhere. Oh. Doesn't matter. Press on. Introduce your next guest. Calling me that? Not an anagram. Simon Denton there. Funny Simon Denton. Yes. What's fascinating about history is that, unlike bread in a bakery or love in a marriage, it's never going to run out. <laughs> But military history is a genre all of its own. A new series promises to shed light on battlefield ingenuity and we'll be talking to its presenter, Sam Chatwin, very shortly. Hello. Shortly. But first, since military history is a subject close to my heart, I thought I'd don my wellies and shed a bit of light on one of my favourite battles. Let's take a look at my report. A simple stream in North Walsham, Norfolk. But six centuries ago, this stream would have flowed with the blood and entrails of fallen men. I was hoping to illustrate it by pouring in this bucket of butcher's waste. But some Dilbert at the council seems to think it would contaminate the water supply. So close your eyes instead and imagine bits of dead men bobbing about in red water. This was the Peasants' Revolt of 1381, caused, some say, by underpaying the workers. But there's compelling evidence that low wages actually increases productivity. As Kirsty Allsop says, a well-fed dog is a slow dog. Whatever the pros and cons, there can be no excuse for the peasants' antisocial behaviour. The execution of their ringleaders serving as a timely reminder that laws are there for a reason. Behind me is North Walsham Heath. What today is a pleasant place to rest was once a peasant place of rest, since many of them lay dying here. You see, razzed up on scrumpian injustice, they brought to the battle only guts and aggression. And as anyone who's played squash against Adrian Childs will tell you, guts and aggression are no match for skill and tactics, unless his opponents had a big breakfast. The battle was bloody. After the first day, the bishop's men set up camp here on the heath, a place for the pooped troops to regroup and recoup. They would have discussed the tactics with a free hot meal included. There were potatoes in those days, of course, they hadn't been developed. It was simply lamb shank or the classic chicken. In contrast, one can picture the peasants loaded on cider, weeing into bushes, telling disgusting jokes before attacking the bishop's men in dawn raids. But their lack of organisation meant they were no match for the deft sorcerership and combat nurse of a trained unit. <laughs> the labourers were serfs, their hands more used to drawing milk from a goat teat than wielding a sword. The trained soldiers knew to have one hand on the hilt, the other on the pummel. That is what I do. I've got kids. God forgive me. The battle continued. The bishop's men fighting off futile frenzy and sometimes rubbish attacks from the peasants. The battle continued till dusk. of the rebels dispatched had a bloody defeat that could have been avoided if the peasants had simply raised their concerns through the correct channels. <laughs> a sobering reminder that war, be it the First World War, the Second World War, or the Great War of China, always takes a heavy toll. We've been fighting. Anna was the winner. 